Did you know that there are three ways to get your DeWalt 20 volt battery packs to work again if they're not charging on a charger? But not all of the methods are safe. Let's cover all three and what you should know about them. I'm obligated to warn you before we begin that lithium ion batteries are nothing to sneeze at. These are extremely powerful batteries in relation to their size and they can easily explode or cause a fire if you're doing something that you shouldn't be with them. You see, each of the cells in this battery is outfitted with a CID, that's a current interrupt device. The CID will trip like a circuit breaker or a fuse if there is excessive pressure, high temperatures, high discharge, um, an internal short, anything that can compromise the integrity of the battery, and it basically trips to prevent that from carrying any further. If the CID were to not trip, then the battery could enter into what we call thermal runaway. And this is typically caused by an internal short, which causes the electrons to flow uninhibited from the negative side of the battery to the positive side of the battery. This unrestricted flow of electrons can cause an Im immense amount of heat, internal pressure, and gas buildup. So much so that the battery can easily catch fire or explode. So before you start messing with your battery, it's best to know what type of issue you're experiencing so that you know whether or not it's safe to bring your battery back to life. And I will show you all of that as we get into this video. So let's get started. Now our first method is relatively simple. This typically affects people who are new to DeWalt tools. Now when you put the battery on the charger, you'll actually meet resistance um, before the battery is fully seated. And if you don't push the battery down fully, and only stop when you first meet resistance, then the battery charger is going to blink a couple times and then go to a solid light. And that's just gonna indicate that it's fully charged when you come back to use the battery. But it should be blinking nonstop until the battery's charged. So it's, if it only blinks about three times and goes solid, you probably do not have the battery seated properly. So make sure to firmly press the battery into the charger so that it fully locks in there and then it should charge and go for you. Now the second method is one that I've done with this brand and with other brands of batteries, but the way you do it between all the different brands is different with every one of them. It's not without risk, but I've personally done it several times and I've had no issues whatsoever. Now if you have a Ryobi brand battery, you can check out my video here and that will show you how to take care of one of these and I've helped thousands and thousands of people get their uh, Ryobi battery back and running. Now this method really only works if the battery has been fully discharged by the tool and then you still wait a while and the battery self discharges over time and it drops below a certain uh, threshold of voltage. And then the voltage falls so low that the battery charger doesn't even recognize that a battery is connected to it. So it's a safety feature built into the battery charger to not just pump out current unnecessarily. You put a completely dead battery on there or one that's so low, the battery charger just says, hey, I don't even see a battery there. So the battery isn't necessarily bad, it's just below the, safe, the minimum voltage needed to overcome the safety feature of the charger. So to get a battery like this to charge, we can simply give it a jump with another DeWalt battery. You'll need two short little lengths of wire. I put little attachments on the end of mine so that they slide nicely into the little slots, but you can use bare wire just fine. You're simply going to put one wire into the B plus of one battery and take that same wire and connect it into the B plus of the other battery and then put a wire into the B minus and then move that over to the B minus of the other battery. You do this for no more than five seconds and then pull the wires out and the dead battery will now have a hefty surface charge on it. Enough so that the charger will recognize that there's an actual battery there and it will start the charging process. Assuming that there's nothing structurally or chemically wrong with your battery, as long as you keep the time Time period short where the wires are connected then from my experience I've had absolutely no problems doing this with batteries. I just wouldn't want to hook up the wires and leave them for several minutes let alone several hours because there's such a massive dump of raw electricity pumping from the good battery into the very very low weak battery that you risk overheating one or both batteries and causing a catastrophic situation. You shouldn't be charging a bad battery from a good battery that's what the charger is for. The charger is there to carefully monitor the current voltage that the battery has and only give it the current that it can accept. When you use a raw, unfiltered dump of energy from a good battery into a bad battery, it just makes that bad battery accept the electrons whether it wants them or not. And when you look into how lithium ion batteries charge, you can find that that can greatly reduce the capacity of a lithium ion battery, if not harm it irreparably. So once again, five seconds is about all you should need. So now for the last method. This is a method that I will personally never perform. I will show you how to do it, but I don't recommend it under any circumstance. There's simply too much to risk in my opinion, considering how inexpensive these batteries are. In this third method, we're operating under the assumption that you have a dead cell 
in the battery because these batteries have five individual cells. We're assuming that one or more of them is dead and not that the entire battery is just a weak voltage because they're all drained. Now to find out if you have a dead cell, you need to have a multimeter handy. I recommend opening the battery case up for this step and you can do so on a DeWalt battery by using a Torx or a T10 bit. Simply remove the four corner screws on the back and then separate the case. And from there, you'll be able to see all of the pins that you're going to be able to test with the multimeter. And now you're going to want to test the actual pins and not just putting the multimeter on each side of the cells. If you do that, you're going to get a balanced number uh, because all of the batteries are strapped together. You're going to want to use the pins and that will actually draw from the specific cells. So here's what you want to do. You're going to want your want to put your black lead, your common, into the B negative, and then you're going to take the red lead and you're going to test that on the C1, the C2, the C3, the C4, and then the B plus. Write all of those numbers down. Then you take the difference of those numbers and you'll see what each of your cells is actually measuring. And I'll give you an example here. Change a microphone here, but as you can see from the previous scene, we took some readings. And our first reading when we did the test from the B minus to the C1, was 3.78. So that is the charge of one of our cells. The next number was 7.57, then 11.35, then 15.14, and then 18.92. So basically all we have to do here is take this number, 7.57 minus 3.78, and that would give us 3.79 for the next cell. And we do the same thing, 11.35 minus 7.57, that's going to give us 3.78. Now you can see these are all very close and we just keep going. Um, these batteries are tied together, they should draw evenly. If you have a bad battery, you would see uh, a change here and I'll show you in one second, but if we just continue this out, we're going to do 15.14 minus 11.35, that's going to give us 3.79, and then we do 18. 0.92 minus 15.14, and that gives us 3.78. If we add all of these up, we get 18.92. So this matches and this matches. Now let's say, for instance, you took these readings and you had 3.78. Then the next one was 7.57. When you went to measure B minus to C2, and then when you went to B minus to C3, you had 7.57, and then you had 11.35, um, and finally a total voltage of 15.14. When you do this one minus this one, you're going to get zero. So you know you have a cell that's bad. Now that you found that one or more of your cells has a zero or a negative voltage, now you're faced with a tough decision, and you need to make that decision soberly. Now you can reset the cell or you can consider the cell a total loss and replace it if you're handy or you can replace the entire DeWalt battery. The cell CID or the current interrupt device has tripped for a reason. It might be because you ran the tool too hard in a hot environment and it just ran up the temperature a little bit and it tripped to prevent the tool battery from getting any further damage. On the other hand, it might be because there's a dendrite buildup inside of the cell, which is causing those dendrite crystals to basically pierce the barrier in between the negative and the positive side of the battery. Once the dendrite crystals cross that barrier, the cell will go into thermal runaway. And that's what caused these fires and explosions. If you decide to reset the cell, there's a chance that you'll walk away with a fully functional battery afterwards. There's also a chance that you're going to be involved with your homeowner's insurance company. You're essentially playing Russian roulette. Also, I do not know if the CID, once it's tripped, will actually re will function again to trip again if there happens to be another issue down the line. So if you know more about the actual engineering of these cells in a lithium ion battery, comment below and let us know. I don't think it's reusable, but that's just my guess. Personally, I will not mess with a battery cell that has a zero or a negative voltage. It's just not worth it to me. Once that CID is tripped, that battery is trash in my opinion. It needs to be disposed of properly, not in the trash. With that being said, I will now show how one who is so inclined would go about resetting the CID on a lithium ion tool battery. If one were to remove the battery cells from the case, 
one would then see the positive and negative notations on the top indicating the positive and the negative sides of each of the cells. On the positive side, one would see one or two small, very small vent holes. One of them leads a little deeper than the other one, and that's the one that gives you access to resetting the CID on that particular cell. Essentially, an inclined person would want to put something very small down in there and not have it be pointed, something slightly rounded, like a paper clip that's slightly bent, almost like you're about to make a hook with it, so that you press down on that foil top and try not to pierce through it. You'll feel it pop back in place, and then you'll hear gases come out with that as well. Once again, remember, the inclined person is going to be pushing down on a very, very thin metallic foil-like substance, and piercing it will be absolutely terrible for this battery. Some batteries may allow you to get a very fine, very small flathead screwdriver down in there, but the DeWalt batteries that I've worked with, you can get nothing more than maybe a small paper clip inside. And once the CID is reset, our brave or foolish inclined person will now likely see a voltage come from that particular cell when you test it with a multimeter, um, if it hasn't already done something catastrophic in that person's hands. From there, they are free to do whatever they want with the battery, but it is best to know that they're playing with fire at this time. Um, this is kind of like a ticking time bomb. It might be absolutely fine for the rest of the life of the battery. It might last one or two charging cycles. It might do something catastrophic the first time you use it or the first time you plug it right back into the charger. If such a person is okay with these risks, they can live their best life. But don't say, I didn't warn you.